In this video, we'll introduce branch instructions. It has been mathematically proven that any algorithms can be expressed with a combination of three control structures, sequence, selection, and loop. The sequence structure means that all statements in a program run in sequential order by default. The selection structure includes statements if, if else, and switch in the C language. The loop structure includes for and while statements. When you program in assembly language, you have to use branch instructions to implement both the selection structure and the loop structure. There are two types of branch instructions, unconditional branch and conditional branch. The unconditional branch instruction B always results in branching. It always transfers the control of execution from the current location to a new location specified by the destination label. A conditional branch instruction transfers the control of execution to a new location only if the specified condition is satisfied. For example, here is a BEQ instruction. Branching only takes place if the comparison instruction CMP shows that these two registers are equal. This table summarizes all branch instructions supported by ARM Cortex M microcontrollers. Each conditional branch instruction specifies a condition to be checked. For example, BEQ branch if equal, BNE branch if not equal. BHS branch if unsigned higher or same. Most conditional codes, except equal EQ and not equal NE, depends on whether the comparison are performed on signed integers or unsigned integers. Here are the conditional codes for signed comparison. Here are the conditional codes for unsigned comparison. If we add a B before these conditional codes, we can obtain conditional branch instructions. For example, BGT is branch if signed greater than, BHI is branch if unsigned greater than. Suppose the register R6 and R5 have these values. When the processor executes the comparison instruction, does the processor know which register holds a larger value? Surprisingly, the answer is no. When these numbers are signed, register R5 is larger because the value in register R6 is negative 1. When these numbers are unsigned, register R6 is larger. From the hardware point of view, when it executes the comparison instruction CMP, the hardware does not know whether they are signed or unsigned. Therefore, CMP assumes they are unsigned, performs unsigned comparison, and updates the carry flag accordingly. At the same time, CMP assumes they are signed, perform signed comparison, and updates the overflow flag accordingly. It's software's responsibility to select the right condition branch instruction. If the software is developed in C language, the compiler will choose the right branch instructions, depending on whether the variables are declared as signed or unsigned in the C program. For example, when variable x and y are declared as signed integers, the compiler will choose BLE as conditional branch instruction in the compiled program. On the other hand, the compiler will choose BLS if variable x and y are declared as unsigned integers in C. If the software is developed in assembly, you, as the programmer, have to understand whether unsigned or signed integers are being compared, and thus choose the right 
conditional branch instructions. Now, let's see how to implement if else in assembly by using branch instructions. Assume value of A is stored in register R1 and the value of B in register R2. First, we compare register R1 with 1. The B and E instruction will branch to the instruction labeled as else if R1 does not equal 1. Otherwise, the next instruction will be executed to set register R2 to 3. The unconditional branch instruction, B and if, always skip the instruction labeled as else. Next, we will show you how to implement a for loop in assembly. This C program calculates the sum of the first 10 integers starting with zero. First, it used two move instructions to initialize the loop counter R0 and the sum R1 to zero. Second, the program goes to the check statement and compares the loop counter R0 and 10. It goes back to the beginning of the loop if R0 is less than 10. We use signed BLT because the loop counter i is declared as a signed integer in the C program. In the loop body, r0 is added into the sum r1, and also r0 is incremented by 1. There are multiple ways to implement this for loop in assembly. Here, we only show one possible implementation.